All right, so I wanted to give you some updates on the meadow. This is almost year two of the meadow. And one of the plants that is the most prolific at this point in time is wild carrot. And you'll be able to see that it's kind of surrounding here. And we are like, oh my God, there's so much wild carrot. We obviously didn't plant it. It's in the seed bank here and we just have to accept it unless we go in there and try to deadhead off all of these. One of the other plants that really moved in, um, and I had seeded some of it, but I think it's also naturally here, is fleabane. And you'll see that the fleabane is, this one at least is kind of on its tail end, but it has been blooming since May. And I think what's interesting about this plant is that it's providing a pollinator resource throughout the year from like May until through August, September maybe. And it's just, flowering at different points of time, which is really nice. The other thing that I had planted in here that is a non-native, but I really wanted to get the experience of it, are these alliums. And you'll see this allium has gone to seed. And then you'll see the spherocephalons, the purple ones that are in there. And those are the drumstick alliums. And you'll see other types of cultivars in here. And that's been really cool to see because they started blooming as soon as the bulb lawn subsided. So end of May, really beginning of June, which is a little earlier than I expected. But my goal was to have them blooming from June through September. And some of them are a little bit too small now to see because they're like really low growing, but the pollinators definitely find them. And I enjoy them because they give that little shock of color. So I'll take you down to an area where I noticed quite a bit more flowers blooming. And I'll have to show you some of the flowers that were blooming early on, because one of the things that we noticed is that we had more blooming in the meadow early in the season that we'd never had before. So the lupin came in, the lupinus perennis, and we did plant some daisies. My, I like the way that lupin and daisies look together. We actually had daisies in here, they're non-native, but it's one of the few non-native plants that I did plant in here. And the Lupinus perennis is actually native and that came up in full force this year. The Polymonium reptans, which is our Jacob's Ladder and the Zizia aurea also came up. You'll see St. John's wort throughout here. So this is like the yellow clumps of St. John's wort. So that's a really wonderful medicinal and I will probably come out and harvest that. So that's really enjoyable for me. And then here you could see some of our black eyed Susans that have come up. It's definitely clumped up more. And again, we're only cutting this meadow down once a year. So that gives us an opportunity to let the stalks grow up, let the seed heads grow up. It provides places for birds to hide seeds for birds to eat, and also stems for some of the overwintering insects to hide in. And the fact that these can go to flower and provide a pollinator resource is really lovely. So here's some of the tail end of our black-eyed Susan, Susans, and you could actually see clumps throughout. And it's so funny because you might have a pretty sizable clump, which feels pretty sizable if it was in like a one acre yard. But because this is like in nine acres and knitted throughout, then it's, it's a bit, it just kind of gets swallowed up by the rest of the foliage. Now this is a great example. I showed you some of the fleabane. This is like a, a different type of species of fleabane. I think this is um, the Philadelphus one, Philadelphia fleabane. And you'll notice that it has a much longer rays than say that fleabane, which has shorter rays. So we do have a couple different species here. One of the other plants that came up earlier in the season was penstemon. We have penstemon digitalis and penstemon hirsutus, which are quite common. And what was really lovely is as I was walking up this area from the meadow house, is that I saw some of our Baltimore checker spots on the penstemon, so eating the penstemon leaves. So one of the goals of this meadow was to actually provide not only a pollinator resource, but have it as an insect meadow that has plants that some of our native insects will eat. And the thinking behind that is that we have dwindling insect species 
dwindling bird species. Those two things are connected. So if you look at our songbirds, 96% of our songbirds from chickadees to bluebirds to catbirds to robins eat insects. They're insectivorous. And if we don't have those caterpillars that are munching on our native plants, then we don't have our birds. So those two things are really much connected. And the amount of wildlife that we see out here, the amount of bug life that we see out in this meadow is just phenomenal. So you'll see some of our fescues and our bromus actually coming up. So this is our uh, grasses that have this kind of purplish hue. So I really like that. The idea was to get some of these purple tinged grasses in here. And I would have loved to plant a little bit more Mullenbergia as well, but uh, that gives a beautiful purple hue, but we just could not get the seed stock, especially the bioregional seed stock for this area. But you can see we have plenty more yellow clumps in here of our black-eyed Susans. And you start to see some of our goldenrods come in. We don't have tremendous amounts of goldenrod, which is fine because that Canada goldenrod has a tendency to kind of be really pushy. But having some of that goldenrod is really important because it's one of the most important species and families of plants that insects want. So we don't want to eliminate goldenrod. We just want it to play nicely with others. I wanted to show you more of this grass so you could see that this is Timothy. And then this is some kind of crazy forage grass. And one of the things that we did this year is we actually cut this back two or three times and it's it could get like probably seven or eight feet tall definitely taller than me and we have to actually cut this back a bit more because we don't want it to go aggressive and we actually have some of that grass like towards the meadow house i realized that maybe just a way for us to kind of select out of it is to just keep it cut back and let other things kind of move in in its place this is an area that we didn't seed. We didn't really um, treat this the same way as we treated this area back here. But you'll see some of that forage grass, this kind of hay grass kind of moving in. And again, it gets really thick and it's hard for other plants to kind of move in. But I just wanted to show you that this is a way that we're probably going to manage it is just by cutting this back a bit more frequently. Now this area in here, you can see that this is all the forage grass. Oh, look at a swallowtail. The swallowtail actually uses like the fennel and dill and some of our umbelliferous plants, parsley as well as its host plant. So that was one of the things that we saw on the fennel in the pollinator garden. Now here I'm most excited because some of the echinacea is starting to come up. So I was not planning to see this this year because this is year two. So it's not as much as we would see it maybe in year three, because echinacea is one of those plants that really spends quite a lot of time focusing on the roots and growing its roots out. So you never usually see it in like year one or two. You don't see much in actually year one or two, and we didn't see much in year one or two except the wild carrot. But the echinacea here is actually quite prolific in this area and a back area that I actually won't take you to because it's just too much meadow <laughs> to actually absorb in one sitting. But this is actually planted throughout. So you'll start to see it come up. Now this is teasel. I went in here, this is another example of management techniques. This teasel we didn't plant, it's just in the seed bank. It gets pretty aggressive. And I basically came down here this month in July and I cut out maybe thousands of them. This one and the curly dock. So we're just kind of selecting what plants we want in here and I'm not ripping them out by the roots. Um, that would be a lot of work, especially with all the other plants in here. I'm just taking a hedge trimmer and kind of cutting off their heads and having less flower heads so that we could manage for less of these. Um, not that I don't like the teasel, I think it actually looks really beautiful. It's just a plant that we haven't planted in here. Example of our goldenrod coming up. 
and our echinacea throughout. I mean, this is just really lovely. If you really cast your eyes in here, you'll be able to see more of it. We can see that tall spike of yellow flower, that's the mullen, and you see all the echinacea kind of wrapped around that mullen, which I think is really beautiful. And I think within year three, we'll start to see much more uh, prolific echinacea in this meadow, like you see in their pollinator garden. That pollinator garden actually after year two, that echinacea really started to push out. So hard to see here, but there is Liatris somewhere over there. I see some gray-headed cone flowers out there. And if you could see just in this section, this is actually where a lot of the penstem and hirsutus comes up, the hairy beard tongue. But this is one of our bergamots. This is our native bergamot that's coming up here, just a small little clump. And if anyone knows the mint family or bergamot, this will eventually start to push out. So I love seeing these little signs of life that we had seeded in this area actually coming up. And there's so much actually under this layer of, of planting, you know what I mean? You could, if you go in here, you see the Daucus corroda, it's almost like the canopy layer, but then you see some of this fleabane, you see some of the clovers, the liatris is coming up, the bird's foot trefoil, like a lot of the stuff we hadn't planted, true, but some of the stuff that we, we did and we're selecting for it. We did burn some of this area right here when we were burning some of the honeysuckle and everything. And you could see some of this area is starting to come up with the, the sunflowers and everything. So we planted some actual plants of sunflowers, but then we actually also planted some seeds. So that's now starting to come up. And I also noticed somewhere in here, <laughs> I planted our pycnanthemum, which is our mountain mint, another mint, somewhere in here. And you can see some of this gray-headed cone flowers coming up. So the pycnanthemum is also, oh yeah, there it is. This is the pycnanthemum in here. So it's growing a little lower, but this will be going into flower pretty soon. And again, you just have to kind of really look and see the promise of this meadow. But I can't believe that like two years ago, this was just an absolute mess. <laughs> we had to take out how much? 64 tons of trash? I don't know, 64 tons of trash. They took out 32 tons and we seeded it in like November of 2021, I believe. So this is part of what came up. And again, not everything is what we've planted, but we could try to select for it over time and see what emerges over the course of the, the following years. But for almost year two, I'm very pleased with what we see and the amount of insects and birds that we already see in this meadow that we didn't see before is exponential.